There's something happening in Formula One that nobody sees. And brakes for the car to work properly. But it decides every race. Because while the cameras follow the cars, Think. the real battle happens in the invisible space between them. Every lap, each car beams out thousands of data channels at 300 kilometers per hour. So much data that teams say they literally cannot race without it. But here's what's strange. No fan ever sees this data. Teams won't talk about it, and F1 refuses to reveal how they even secure it. And yet, a single corrupted data point could make a team destroy its own race strategy. A radio jammer placed in the right spot could blind an entire pit wall. A spoof tire temperature could cause a catastrophic failure. A hacker has already targeted a team's CEO the night before a Grand Prix. And the official F1 app was breached, meaning the sport's digital perimeter is not nearly as secure as people assume. The cheating, counter-cheating, and corporate espionage in F1 are like some James Bond-level stuff. So here's the question. How much of a Formula One race is actually real? And how much is just data we hope hasn't been tampered with? Because if the wrong person ever figured out how to alter just one of those thousands of streams, not even the car, just the numbers the engineers trust, would anyone in Formula One notice before the car hits the wall? Sup nerds, I'm Addy. I spent 15 years in cybersecurity and a few years obsessing over Formula One. One day I wondered, what's actually stopping someone from hacking one of these cars mid-race? That question broke my brain, and I spent hundreds of hours digging ever since. Formula One looks like the world's fastest mechanical sport, but almost every race is decided by something you can't see. There's basically a whole second F1 race happening every Grand Prix, and it's all in the data. Each car is wired like a nervous system, built with 250 to 300 sensors, and over 1,500 meters of cabling, a full mile of wire packed into a machine that weighs even less than a vending machine. During a single race weekend, it generates up to 1.5 terabytes of raw telemetry, split across 1,000 to 2,000 channels. Every lap, the car transmits 30 megabytes of real-time information, like GPS, tire temps, engine mappings, suspension loads, fuel mix, battery harvest, and hundreds more, streamed at a millisecond latency through a rotating antenna system at over 200 miles per hour. The data handoffs are happening mid-race, in motion, at speeds comparable to fighter jets. And that stream feeds directly into a live digital twin which is a full 3D model of the car running in parallel, updated in real time back at the factory, a whole continent away. There's a mirrored control room shadowing the race, watching that model, not the real car, for decision making. Engineers sit behind rows of screens, watching numbers instead of wheels. They monitor thermal drift, performance deltas, threat flags, and packet anomalies. If the stream cuts off, they call the car in immediately. We don't run the car if the telemetry is down. That's what an actual team engineer said. The digital twin makes the decisions because teams don't trust the physical car. Instead, they trust the representation of the car reconstructed from those data packets. So if that model gets corrupted, even subtly, it's bad brakes, the wrong fuel load, missed pit stops, blown tires, even DNFs. And here's where everything starts to warp. What happens when the numbers in that feed are no longer real? Because when the twin goes down, the car loses both performance and guidance. But that's when it stops being a racing problem. So why aren't teams talking about it? A race car can't be hacked through the firewall, but altering its temperature data can still cause the car to blow itself apart. The telemetry link is the most fragile part of the system, designed with speed in mind rather than withstanding hostile conditions. Packets fly across the system with barely enough encryption to hold together, and no time for deep checks. If one thing slips through, it's too late to stop it. From an attacker's perspective, it's a dream. There are no do-overs mid-race. You can't restart the car or patch telemetry pipelines. Now here's where the physics get weaponized. A fake tire temp can force a premature pit stop, or worse, leave a driver on cold tires headed into a braking zone. False fuel readings can trigger a DNF, miscalculating to empty. Spoof battery temps can shut down the hybrid system mid-race. RF, or radio frequency, interference can cut off strategic comms during overtakes. Latency exploits can delay a break-by-wire signal just long enough to cause a lockup. Man-in-the-middle attacks could silently relay tampered signals, hiding changes behind a wall of good checksums. And then there's the full system play, a poison digital twin. Feed the model enough fake telemetry and it starts issuing correct decisions for the wrong reality. 
That's a strategic kill, and it can happen without a single person in the garage even knowing. So what are teams doing about it? They've gone quiet, and for good reason, but the signs are visible if you know where to look. Top teams now run security operations centers during races. They monitor the RF spectrum for interference signatures. They run real-time anomaly detection on telemetry patterns. And some engineers are even trained to visually spot spoofed waveforms in packet graphs. But there's one question no one wants to answer out loud. What are they even preparing for? Because if all of this is already in place, what's already happened? Incidents that shouldn't be possible, but happened anyway. The hacker was aiming for a person, and that person was the team CEO. The night before race day, a carefully crafted phishing email slipped through, targeted, timed, and convincing enough to pass through layers of corporate security. Had it actually landed, it would have opened a tunnel straight into the decision-making layer of an entire Formula One team. There's a deeper pattern here, buried under the podium photos and post-race interviews. Remember when fans used to eavesdrop on team radios using cheap radio scanners? And it forced teams to encrypt all internal comms mid-season, after it became clear that live strategic data was leaking in real time. Or the time a team engineer's laptop got hit with malware during testing in Barcelona. The entire day of data was lost. It wasn't even a direct attack on the car, but because the simulation pipeline was interrupted, their predictive models broke. The telemetry stream was fine, but the interpretation of it completely disappeared. That was hours of tire testing wasted. Later, the official Formula One mobile app was also compromised. Fans received bizarre push notifications. The incident was chalked up to unauthorized access and swept aside. But someone, somewhere, found a hole in the digital layer connected to millions of devices during a live race. There's a reason one team quietly started x-raying their electronic hardware before races. They had found signs of tampering in their hardware. That means malicious components embedded at the supply chain level. The only way to catch it was to scan every board like airport security. And yes, Spygate happened. That's full engineering documents that were leaked, including codes, design secrets, and setup preferences, all copied, exfiltrated, and traded like black market weapons. But not everything came from the inside. One team traced an anomaly in their telemetry back to a rogue receiver unit. Someone was passively listening to the raw telemetry stream. Nothing was being touched, the data was simply being recorded, and they were logging every break trace, deployment pattern, and temperature profile. Data like that fed into an opposing simulator can give a massive strategic edge. And then there's the clone problem. Counterfeit car designs like full CAD files started showing up in underground groups, replicated and reverse engineered down to the micron. It raised an unthinkable possibility. Someone was capturing both the data coming out of the car and the fingerprint of how it was built. Those stories barely scratch the headlines. In any other sport, one of these incidents would have been an earth-shattering scandal. But in Formula One, it barely makes the news. But they all share one thing in common. Every single attack, exploit, and breach, whether it was digital, physical, or psychological, were aimed at the invisible infrastructure behind the car. So why isn't anyone talking about where these attacks are really hitting? Because they point to something much stranger and much harder to fix. Imagine defending a live system that can't stop, can't patch, and can't ever be wrong, even for one millisecond. That's the starting line for Formula One cybersecurity. Let's strip it down to the physics. The car can't stop during a threat. There's no reboot protocol at 320 kilometers per hour. You can't validate telemetry deeply because the checks take too long. You can't encrypt heavily because it adds latency. You can't reroute packets. The RF spectrum is saturated and already optimized to the edge. The data stream has to transmit globally in real time with 10 milliseconds of latency to Europe and up to 300 milliseconds to Australia. And all of it has to survive extreme temperatures, weather conditions, high G-forces, and interference from a dozen competing cars running the same tech. In a traditional network, when things go sideways, you isolate, reboot, run diagnostics, and patch. But in Formula One, by the time you've done that, the race is over. So the only option is prevention without any delay. You have to detect the intrusion before it ever manifests. And here's where it gets worse. The telemetry infrastructure is shared. That means if one vulnerability exists in that shared pipeline, every team gets exposed all at once. If someone finds the right packet structure, 
the right offset, the right injection point, they compromise the sport. And the people defending it are working under the most brutal constraints in cybersecurity. And this is coming from someone with eight years in the US Air Force securing fighter jets. You have no room for false positives, no time for slow scans, and no second chances. So how do you secure something that's too fast to filter, too fragile to pause, and too interconnected to isolate? There's an answer, but it's not comforting. Because when I trace the weak points through the system, they all converge on the same place. And that's where I found the real threat, the one no team can outrun. When you trace every weak point we've talked about, like telemetry fragility, global streaming, shared hardware, and milliseconds only decision windows, they don't point to one single villain. They point to an entire design philosophy. Formula One has evolved into a distributed computing system that just happens to be strapped to four tires. The car is a cloud-connected supercomputer moving at 220 miles per hour, running thousands of real-time calculations per second across a wireless link that cannot slow down. Every lap is a synchronization ritual between physical reality and the digital model that teams trust more than their own eyes. That architecture creates traps that no single team can patch away. First, there's the single telemetry backbone. Formula One uses a standardized sport-wide telemetry and RF ecosystem. That's a shared dependency. That means one set of assumptions, protocols, and one global spine every car has to plug into. They also have standardized ECUs and radio hardware. Teams build wildly different cars, but they rely on the same core components that make the attack surface partially uniform. Next, there's global distribution mid-race. You might think data just goes to the pit wall, but no, it's much more incredible. It splashes across continents, to factory mission control rooms, and cloud simulation clusters back home. Stretch a system across thousands of miles, and you inherit every weakness of wide area networking, like latency variance, routing quirks, transient loss, and exposure to anything sitting between endpoints. Then you have remote mission control dependencies. Race engineers read telemetry, then steer strategy through it. It's truly remarkable. Then there's tire windows. That means energy deployment, undercut timing, cooling modes, differential settings, and all of it flows from the digital twins version of reality. There's no time for human verification. On the track, there's no practical way to sanity check an anomaly by hand. If the sensor says the tire surface temperature is spiking, you react in milliseconds, under pressure at top speed. And lastly, there's growing complexity every season. Every year adds new sensors, channels, models, and layers. The surface area just keeps expanding. The cars get faster, so the link has to get faster. The link gets faster, so the checks get thinner. The checks get thinner, so the model becomes easier to nudge. This goes beyond one exploit or bad actor. It's the entire structure of the whole system. So by now, the question changes shape to something uglier and more exciting. If the system is built to be fragile, in exactly the places attackers love, how do defenders keep up without slowing the sport down? Right now, while you're watching overtakes, another race is happening in parallel, quietly and relentlessly. Teams treat every Grand Prix like a live fire cybersecurity exercise. Everyone knows the stack has to hold, so they build layers that don't mess with the milliseconds. Here's what that looks like in the real world of Formula One operations. First, dedicated cybersecurity crews on race weekends. Some teams run full sock style war rooms alongside strategy. Their job is to stare at the invisible, stuff like packet integrity, RF spectrum anomalies, baseline drift, timing jitter, and anything that smells like interference instead of physics. Next, there's RF spectrum monitoring like air traffic control. They sweep for jamming signatures, rogue transmitters, odd bursts in forbidden bands, and subtle noise patterns that wouldn't show up in normal telemetry graphs. Next, there's telemetry anomaly detection tuned to racing physics. Most anomaly detection hunts for weird, but Formula One hunts for weird at 300 kilometers per hour. The models know what the tire attempts should do at turn seven, what battery state should look like after full deployment, and what brake traces should resemble in wet conditions. Any deviation gets flagged fast. There's engineer training for gut check moments. They drill their teams to spot telemetry that's technically plausible, but contextually wrong. Then there's hardware inspection and supply chain paranoia. This is just methodical. Teams validate components, scan electronics, log firmware baselines, and lock down their build pipelines. If the sport runs on shared infrastructure, 
The only leverage left is making sure your slice stays clean. Then there's FIA cybersecurity regulation steering. The governing body has started pushing for tighter standards around comms, telemetry pathways, and operational security across teams. Then there's next-gen cryptography research, which is the most fascinating to me. They're testing encryption schemes designed for brutal time constraints, lightweight enough to survive a one to two millisecond budget, strong enough to resist modern attacks, and resilient to RF chaos. This doesn't make Formula One safe forever, but now it's safe enough to keep trusting at the speed of reality. And that's the magic of this whole story. Formula One teams are doing so much more than simply building a perfect defense. It's more akin to keeping a living digital organism coherent while it screams through space, faster than most networks can even blink. Because the next world championship may not be decided on the track, but in the race to protect the data that drives the car, and if even one number in that data stream is wrong, the entire sport collapses. If the telemetry in Formula One sounded intense, your own car is collecting far more than you think. And the story gets even stranger in the next video. I'll meet you there.